Hey render nerds, another angle, 3D visuals here to warm you up with this steamy sauna animation tutorial. We will be using Corona Render, 3ds Max, and Phoenix FD. Start the tutorial please. So approximately one year ago today, I made this video for a client. It was a bit of R&D and I wanted to show off to the client. Um, I still like the way this came out, particularly because I haven't really seen anything done like this since. I think the effect works quite well, and I've got to tell you, it was very simple. But because it was done one year ago, I thought we can do better. So I did a quick search on Shutterstock and tried to find some better examples. Um, this is basically the best I could come up with. Um, the scene here is a little light, um, but it is similar to my scene which I do want to replicate. And what I particularly like in this shot here is the way the rocks get wet and then dry up. So I'm not sure if I can actually achieve that or not, but we're going to give it a, a go. So let's start in 3ds Max. We've got a blank scene. Let's go. Simplicity is the name of the game here. I'm going to start with the blank scene and let's just do a really simple three by three meter box. I work in millimeters, whoops, I work in millimeters. Um, honestly, I don't think there is an advantage to working in millimeters over centimeters, but it's just how I work, being a former architect. Now, simplicity is the aim of the game here. As I've said, let's just take off a couple of walls. Let's uh, detach these as a clone. And these are going to be our panels for our wooden walls. Detach that one as well. Now we will have to change the normals of all of these. We can quickly do that. By clicking normal. Looks better. Now to use one of my favorite um, plugins. Floor generator. Um, so it didn't quite work as expected. We'll make this unique. We will rotate this 90 degrees. Make the length maybe 10,000. And the offset zero. So we should just have long continuous strips. Great. Um, let's make them quite thick. So extrude 15 and bevel maybe five. Looks good, and then we will do some grout, maybe 15 mil. How does that look? Pretty good sauna walls, maybe even thicker, maybe 25 mil. And what we can do is copy this, delete this floor generator, paste it there, and simply change the direction. Now, um, as I keep saying, we're gonna keep this super simple by using the stock standard um, Corona render materials. I'm a fan of this uh, matte honey oak. Let's assign that to these two walls. Um, a little UVW map box, real world, and put it in the Z direction, and there we have it. We can go one step further and randomize these panels using good old Corona's randomization tool. So if we select that material, um, we can plug in our UVW randomizer, plug it into there and there as well, so it's always the same. Rotate it to 360 degrees every 180 degrees, and we can change the scale a little bit and make sure it's by mesh element. So, if we start our first render, should be a bit green because we still have some green walls. Um, and I think I'll just add that same material to all the walls. Great. 
Looks like I've got a sun in this scene. I might delete that because we're going to not use any environment lighting in this um, scene. So let's delete that. Let's add a couple of Corona lights. I like rectangle lights and recently I've discovered that I like them targeted as well. So we can target them to our corner there. There's one light and two lights. I uh, will copy it because I want them different temperatures. And in the name of keeping things simple, I liked to use this set of default layers and make sure that I'm putting everything on the correct layers. Now, um, I don't think I want to create a camera just yet, but let's start our sauna. Um, how does our reference look here? I don't like the look of that sauna so much. How does this one look? Also, probably. I think I want a sauna like I originally did, which was quite basic, um, a bit minimalist and more contemporary looking. So let's stop our render. Let's just start a box. I think the sauna should be approximately that big. Let's say it's um, yeah, 900 high, maybe um, 400 by 600. Seems good to me. I think in the corner is fine. And now we just want to edit this and sh maybe delete the top first. Um, and chamfer these sides. Nice, big, thick chamfer. Something, yeah, 150 is pretty good, I think. And one, two, three, four, five, maybe even more chamfer all the way. So it's nice, rounded edges like so. Maybe a little bit less, 175. There we go. There is the basic sauna oven shape. Next, I'm going to add a little lip to this uh, sauna oven. The easiest way for me to do that is just to give it a little bit of thickness like that. We can select all of these, whoops, all of these, um, and simply detach them. Let's just call it sauna oven lip. And let's just shell it maybe 50 in and 50 out. That's way too much. Maybe 10 in and 20 out. How's that? Still a bit too much. Let's call it 10 in and 10 out. I think that looks fine now. And we can just do the chamfer. I have a default chamfer, AA default, as you can see here. Smooth chamfers only is turned on. Um, the amount is one mil and the segment is three. Works pretty well in most situations, I think. If you want to go a step further, we can turbo smooth this and it should look quite nice. Now, once again, stock standard Corona material for, maybe let's just give this oven a plasticky look. Nice and white, yep, rough. And let's give this top bit a metal. Actually really like this iron rough lately. And let's see how this renders out. Not bad. Once again, simplicity is our friend here. We're going to turn off our environment lighting. Scene, single map, let's turn that off. Let's turn this to black. Sorry, it's off the screen. And now the only thing lighting our scene here is our two lights. I might make one of them a bit warmer and one a bit colder. So let's turn this down to 3500. Yep, that's quite warm. And this one, maybe 8500. How's that? Not terrible. I'm not in love with it at the moment, but let's see how we go. Let's give a UVW map to these back walls as well. 
just so they don't look so boring. And we'll chamfer these so they've got a nice edge. And then maybe a bit more than one mil, maybe three mil. How's that looking? Whoops. Yeah, good, nice wooden edge, uh, nice soft edges. I've got to turn this UV. What do we got here? Oh, wrong one. Turn this to X so it's going the right direction. All right, time to add some rocks to the sauna. I don't know how I'm going to do this, so bear with me. Um, a little sphere like so. Let's just move it up. Yep, it's about the right size. Let's do some noise. Actually, let's simplify it a bit first. Maybe 12 sides. Mm, 16 sides. Noisy it up. Maybe 20, 20, and 20. Much too small. 50, 50, 50. And turn this down or up. Let's scale. 200, 200, 200. Let's uh, squeeze it. How's that look? Not terrible. If we give it a hmm, the stone material, what do you think? How's that? And UVW map. Box real world. Oh, yeah, it looks all right for now. Now we can simulate these rocks after I do a little save. Please, guys, never forget to save your scenes. Now, this is the fun stuff we're going to simulate. Um, we are going to do it quite simply. We're going to have a plane that just catches our rocks at about there we are going to copy these rocks maybe now we're going to instance them five times rotate a couple of them rotate this one maybe um, copy our instance those as well maybe do that maybe do that drop them down so it doesn't take so long to simulate to make sure there's none falling out of the space and maybe we can just copy all of these like so twice really 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 basic non-scientific got a few rocks there it should fall fine before we do our simulation, we will need to give ourselves our Mass FX toolbar. I like to drag it up there. Since converting to Max 2021, the uh, logos have changed, but I think what we need to do, select our rocks, give them dynamic rigid body. Yep, good. Give our plane here a rigid body static I've already done that as you can see and finally I'm actually going to hide this and we're going to use this guy and what I've done with this one is give it a rigid body static also but keep its shape as original so that way it'll just sort of contain the rocks in that a bit a few might fly out but that's okay I might actually just drag this down a little bit more uh, maybe give us a couple more rocks Actually, we probably can just spread them out a little bit. So some there, some there. These two will probably fall out of the place, so let's put them there. That guy can move in here. Just sort of neatening it up because we don't want them. We don't want to be wasting any rocks, which is pointless. Um, I think they can go there. Now, one key thing is to make sure that none of the rocks are actually. Um, colliding so if we check this out in perspective view and we zoom in on that guy yep they look good no one's colliding if they're touching before you start the simulation things might go a little bit haywire so once again do a save hit play see what happens 
Oh, looking good so far. And wow, I'm pretty happy with that. Can stop the simulation. We can click on our Mass FX rigid body. Uh, maybe we just want to select all our rocks, but we don't want our plane there. And we can bake that. So it goes through the simulation once more, it animates them. We don't really want that animation. So what we do after 100 frames is go to our 100th frame. Let's just um, hide this guy, we'll hide this guy now. We can probably delete that rock and that rock. Are there any more floating around? Oh, one got out there, one got there and there and there. Yep, they're the only outliers. Um, let's zoom in a little bit and see how they look. Actually, not bad. I'm pretty happy with those rocks. The texture's a bit basic. Are there any poking through? A tiny bit, but we can just give this guy a shell modifier out, maybe 5 mil. And maybe we can give this lip a little more. Um, let's get rid of that Mass FX body and let's do a push modifier. Push it out a little bit. How does it look? And just shrink that lip back down. Not a bad start, I think. Before we go any further, let's not forget to delete all of the animation layers on these rocks. That way, there's no animation happening. Good. Whoops, we don't want to do that. Um, and it just keeps things a bit simpler and neater. Now, even though I'm happy with most things at the moment, um, the thing that doesn't look so nice is our rock texture. Um, I might actually collapse them all into one big... I might actually collapse them all into one big object. So let's get rid of our layers there. We can delete our plane. Definitely don't need that anymore. That means our rocks are just on a nice, clean layer all by itself. Let's do a collapse. Nice. Hit restart. There they are. Um, I like to use editable polys rather than editable meshes. Give the turbo smooth. Nice. Um, bring our material editor back up. Over on the other screen. Um, now these rocks are a bit too shiny. No, not that one. Please this one yep marble now I'm currently using Corona 7 beta um, which means that these um, materials that I'm using are the legacy material but for now it doesn't really matter Corona now does have these uh, PBR materials physical materials with a lot more control over various components I don't know much about that right now I haven't introduced myself to it yet so first in our basic material whew, some things are a little bit slow here um glossiness let's turn that down to about 0.5 whoops if we got a map on let's turn that down to about 33 percent um maybe even. yeah and i think the real killer detail for these um Rocks will be giving them a little bit of a. Um, I don't think I want to bump map so much as I do a displacement map. So let's just go Corona bit map. I will navigate to my um, rocks. I'm just choosing a random rock here at the moment because it really doesn't matter, I don't think. Actually, let's do a normal reflection. A normal map. 
because adding displacement is a bit too much for us, I think. Um, bump. What I forgot to do is add gamma and turn this bump up, probably, yes, because it's very, 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 very small. Um, got to give this a size. We're using real world, maybe 500 mil by 500 mil. Huh, much better. Um, and maybe like we did before, I'll give these rocks a little bit of some variation. So maybe our um, multi-map, I'll plug our texture into there. I'll do one item and maybe change our hue by one and our gamma by one and do it by mesh element. If I plug that in here. If we make this extreme, you can see that they change a little bit. So this maybe we we'll keep that at about 3%. And yeah, the hue doesn't seem to make much of a difference, so we'll leave it like that. Now we're gonna have a nice close tight um, shot on this. Maybe we can start something like something like that. Maybe even a bit closer. I will select my camera layer yeah it's starting to look pretty good actually um, and let's make a camera great um, should we animate this a hundred lay a hundred frames yeah 100 frames I think is pretty good so we've got our camera selected let's move here if we move our camera Oops, camera and our target together. Something like that. So if we move back, great. And I might just move the target a little bit too so we get a bit more dynamic camera movement. And something like that. So let's stop our animation. Let's just play it through. Not bad, it's a bit static at the moment, but we can play with that a bit later. But now we're gonna get into the really fun stuff and you will be amazed at how bloody simple this is. Let's make a, hmm, let's make a cylinder. Size should be approximately the size of a sauna ladle, I guess. Take it out of view. Make sure you get into your perspective mode and don't mess up your camera. Let's give it a couple of cap segments. Let's edit that. Let's select this bottom. Whoops, I don't want to exit that and delete the rest of that shit. To an auto key, move, whoops, yep. Move that one there. Again there, move it there, and by the end there, let's move it up and to the front. And if we just check this out, how does our ladle look? It's a bit jagged. So what I think I'll do is edit my curves. Ah, okay. And let's just change these to hmm, smooth. No. Yeah, that's what we want. Okay. Close that and watch this again. Not bad. Okay, so we are going to set up our Phoenix FD water simulation. The first thing we want to do is create a new layer. Let's call this Phoenix Water Sim. Um, we select our emitter and we click this button right here, which will set up a grid for us. This purple thing is our grid and it creates a liquid source as well. We don't need to worry about that for now. Um, let's hide everything else. Go into the top viewport 
center this into the middle of the um, sauna and we're going to change in our modifying panel here the size of the grid we're going to make it wider so it encompasses all of the sauna oven and the walls a little bit too because that way if we have some splashes on the walls we'll see those as well and a bit wider so I think we can lift it up a little bit because we don't need it to be so low and the only other consideration we need is to make sure that when this uh, ladle, the emitter moves, that it's still within the bounds of the box. So if we move it there, um, by this point the water has stopped running anyway. So, yep, looks all good. Maybe I'll just make it a little bit smaller to save a bit of rendering uh, processing time. Um, we want to decrease the resolution for a quick test first. The resolution, so the total cells and the... Um, steps uh, steps per frame are what control basically the quality and therefore the time of the simulation so if we turn this down to one just for a really quick test we can see how this works um, so in theory water should start falling out of this um, emitter onto our rocks and the emitter should start moving so I might just decrease that even more so hopefully this will be quite quick looks good so far I'm going to press stop um, one thing I did forget to do is open this um, Z axis um, so that just means that rather than let's see rather than the water collecting at the bottom of our um, grid there the water will fall right through um, and that way we just won't see a pool of water when we do the simulation another thing we need to do is turn on wetting now wetting will give us that effect that we talked about at the beginning of the clip where the rocks get wet um, delay drying time is 10,000 at the moment but I think we want that to be more like one that means it's after one second it will begin to dry I might make it a little bit sticky and I might let it consume a tiny bit as well I'm just testing these at the moment um and i think that's all we actually need so let's just do let's increase our resolution a tiny bit go back to the start and see how it's looking once again we should see some wetting with the red dots yep the red dots indicate that the wetting is working so anytime the water touches the uh, rocks or anything else it turns it gives us a little red um, dot and we will use that soon in another simulation There's a rock colliding now, I might have to fix that. Um, and if we just let this see, yep, we can see that the red dots are moving away because they're drying in theory. So that was um, 56 frames, which is approximately, yeah, approximately one second after it first got wet, maybe two. Now let's start trying to make our rocks wet. Um, we can do that by bringing up our material editor we have to use this Phoenix FD particle texture. Um, now, one thing to remember with this is it took me a long time to find it because it's actually hidden for most users. And the way it's hidden is um, this show incompatible is generally unticked. So for me to find this Phoenix FD um, particle texture, I had to, I had to, I don't know how to do this easily. <laughs> I had to show incompatible. Um, so it, it brings up this texture node here. Um, and then we have to select our liquid simulation. So that's this one. And then our wet map. Okay. Um, for Corona Render, I'm not sure how this works for other render engines, but for Corona Render, you have to untick render time only. And then to basically to change the texture of the rocks, we use this as a mix um, mix map. So if we plug this into our diffuse, we've got white and black. I might swap those. So white will be dry and black will be wet. Um, and make sure to change this to mix. So if we um, turn on our render, 
Let's turn off a light here. If we zoom in, we can see there's a few dots of black there, but they're not great yet. So one thing we have control over in our settings of this um, Phoenix map is the size. So it's called five mil. And there you go, it's a little bit noisy. But it's only noisy because we have such a low resolution water simulation done so far. Um, we can change these. There you go, it looks a bit nicer already. To be honest, I'm not entirely sure what these do, but I've been playing around with them a little bit to get different results. Obviously, you want to avoid these big splotches like that, but as I said, you can lower this number um, once we have a higher resolution um, once we have a higher resolution simulation happening but so far so good um, to get that wet look what I will simply do is plug this original texture into our top and bottom and then I'll do a simple corona color um, correction maybe 0.5 yep looking quite good oh, wrong one this one should be in the color correction and that one should be there. Um, and maybe 0.5 is a bit strong, 0.3. If we go to our camera view, not bad, not bad. What we can also do is copy that and put it in as our reflection. So if we remove these nodes and we keep it as black and white, where it has water on it, it will be more shiny. So let's just hide our simulation for a little bit. So we need to swap these around. Where we have black, you can see it's a bit more shiny. And that's just because water is quite shiny when it's on rocks um, and the last thing I do is turn down the bump so I'm going to have two um, normal maps whoops wrong one normal map goes in there normal map goes in there and put our normal map into the bump and this one we will turn down to 0.1 maybe and this one oh no wrong way around this should be one and this is 0.25 that means just when we have the water uh, on the rock it's just slightly less bumpy because the in theory the water smooths it out a little bit or well, have I got that the wrong way around at the moment let's see what our bump is like Let's turn that up again. If we turn off top. Yep, so this should be on top and that should be on bottom. There we go. That's nice and rough and that's slightly less rough and we can turn this back down to 0.7. Um, so what we can do next is begin to simulate our smoke and we will also be using this Phoenix FD um, texture node there. Um, so again, make a new layer. Let's call it Phoenix Steam Sim. Let's unnest that. This time we're gonna make it slightly different. We click on the fire smoke simulator and just copy the existing grid size. Not exactly, it doesn't really matter. Um, let's drag it down so it's still in there and touching the rocks and yeah that looks about right once again we will turn down our resolution whoops in our grid much too many at the moment maybe like one and a half million is fine dynamics we will change the steps per frame to one it already is 
Um, and the thing with a fire simulation is we need something to actually be on fire. So let's create a smoke fire source. Um, let's just drag this in there. I don't know where it is, to be honest. No, it's just very, 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 very small. <sighs> um, and we just need to add an emitter node. Now, in this case, the thing that we want to steam are our rocks. So we just click add, select our rocks and done. Because we want the rocks to only steam where we have our um, wetness. So when the water hits the rocks, the rocks get wet and that water then turns into steam. Because we want that to happen, we can use this same Phoenix um, node and plug that into map. Click OK. Now we can go back to our fire. Um, and let's do a really quick simulation. I will let this run for maybe 10 or 15 frames or maybe a few more. Um, so I'll click pause and then we'll see you soon. So as you can see, the simulation is actually running quite fast. I've already done 32 frames. It's doing a frame a second almost. I'm going to press stop. So far, it's looking quite successful. Um, let's see what it looks like in the render. I haven't done anything to these settings. So um, you can see that we obviously have some fire. We don't want fire for obvious reasons. You can also see that when my camera moves inside this grid, the smoke disappears. That's because Corona Renderer is unable to render um, volumetrics. This smoke is called a volumetric. It's unable to render volumetrics when we um, have the camera inside the box. So although, whoops, although we're using like a, a non-physical camera for this viewpoint at the moment, oof, it is inside this green box, which means that it's not gonna render. So we have to get outside of that. So you will notice that my camera here is outside of that box, which is obviously important. Um, so if we click on our um, preview, nope, rendering, and volumetric options. This is all in Phoenix FD now. Fire, we can just disable. Great, we don't have any fire. It's a lot cleaner render now. That fire is not producing any um, extra light, which is exactly what we don't want. Um, and now we can just change, mess with the smoke color and the smoke opacity. So I think smoke color, let's make white because we don't want it to be smoke so much as we do want it to be steam. And then the opacity we can turn right down. If we go to our camera, see what that looks like. Maybe 0.005 is a bit too low. 0 0.1, 0 0.0, maybe 0 0.05 for now. Um, can we get it any whiter? If we turn on a light. Maybe it can be 0 0.005. Hmm. 0.1. That will do for now. Um, and that's basically it for the smoke and fire simulation. Uh, sorry, the smoke and water simulations. The only other thing that we need to do for those two now is, of course, simulate them properly. So I'm going to do those right now. Of course, um, I should simulate the water first. So if we click on our um, Phoenix water simulation, um, which is this one, liquid 001. I'm going to turn up my resolution to maybe, I think 22 million is mm, well, probably way too much, but it honestly won't take too long. Uh, to, to do 100 frames will only take I think it will only take half an hour or so on my computer. Um, the steps per frame um, in our dynamics, we need to turn that back up to 12. And we do have wetting on, we have jammed open, great. Um, and that's basically it for our settings. There is one more thing that I forgot to mention for our steam simulation. If we scrub to the start of our simulation, you can see that 
the water doesn't actually touch the rocks for the first mm, seven or eight passes, seven or eight frames. So that means we can save a little bit of simulation time by not starting at zero for our smoke, uh, our steam simulation, but starting it at eight and still letting it finish at 100 frames. Um, so just be careful of things like that. Similarly, we can increase resolution. I think I'll go up to 22 million. That's again, probably way too much. Um, these can all remain open. It doesn't really matter. And then we can turn our steps per frame back up to 12. Now, the final thing we want to do is change our liquid source emitter so it stops pouring. Maybe it should stop pouring around 70, I think. So let's just auto key this velocity. Let's make it 99 there and 50 there and maybe zero there. And that remains at zero, yes. And it's changing a little bit here. Let's just start the pour 50, set the pour off nice and slow, make it a bit bigger, 150, 100. So here we are a day later. I let the two simulations run. I did a test render overnight as well. This is how it's looking at the moment. Um, and I can show you the incomplete test render. Um, I think when I compare this to the earlier version, so this was my sauna R&D from a year ago. It's definitely an improvement. There's definitely some things in this original um, animation that I still like. But uh, this one's got a lot more life to it, I think. Um, a lot of that has to do with has a lot to do with this extra light that I added coming in from the side. Um, it, you can see that you get a bit of flare happening. It lights up one side of the rocks. It uh, gives a bit of contrast. You can see this um, shadow on the wall, which is quite interesting. It makes the side of the sauna look a lot brighter. Just the scene is a lot nicer than when I left you guys. I also um, spent a bit of time just neatening things up. I added a bit of texture and fixed this sauna material. Um, there was a bit of a conflict in the corner here between the wood. I also added some um, drips to the walls. So that's just using the same, that's just using the same wet map. Um, you can see you've got some drips back there, um, more drips back there. And it's exactly the same process as what we did to the rocks. Um, I think that adds a nice little touch but I did make a few fatal errors. I thought it would be interesting to make the water less watery and a bit more reflective, and that was a massive fail, to be honest. I, um, yeah, <laughs> it just doesn't look very good, I think. This water is too much too shiny. It's not so clear. It's much too reflective as well. It's got a bit of a blue tinge, which you can see here in the shadow. Um, that was just a massive failure. I should have just left that as clear white um, water, basically. Um, and even though the wet, wet, oh, let's just close this. Let's open um, my video. Even though the wet map is quite successful, it's I'm not in love with it, to be honest. It's a bit splodgy. I think the resolution could be a bit higher and the, the pixel size could be a bit smaller. So I might test that out again, play around with it. Um, but otherwise, I think we're getting very close to the end of this animation and this tutorial. What I will show you is the um, results of the simulations. So this is where the two simulations are saved. This is the fire, and you can see that it was doing, what's that, um, six frames a minute. And if we started at 7.13, it finished at... Um, 735 so that really didn't take long at all um so that's 20 25 minutes um and the resolution for what did we say that was that was the fire the resolution for the phoenix smoke simulation was quite low in the end it was only um 3 million for the liquid it was all the way up at 30 million um as we can see there 
So the liquid um, was taking 640, it was doing four frames a minute approximately. That started at 440 and ended at almost five o'clock. So that was also very fast. That was extremely fast actually. That's amazing for 30 million frame, uh, 30 million cells. So let's see if we can uh, if we can't improve these um, wet effects. I think I'm just going to turn off the smoke simulation to make the render go a bit faster. Zoom in a bit. As you can see, it is quite high resolution here. So if we mess around with our material editor, I think I'll even turn off the water. Yeah. Um, get our marble instance that. Here's our phoenix here. Um, see, I've got it quite high at five. If we go down to one, oh, that's already such an improvement. Yep, much, much better. I ended up um, actually removing the bump. So I think I should put the bump back in. Let's put that there. Turn this down to 0.25. We get our camera. Oh, that's going so much better. This one I'm not so keen on. How does that look? Maybe it's just too dark in general. Let's change our color correction. Negative two, and maybe it just needs to have less saturation. Negative one. No, let's keep that. Contrast with contrast go up. Not sure. Let's look at our original reference image. Um, materials. Let's use this one, which we liked. The thing that I like about this is the way that it dries sort of from the bottom upwards. You can see that that rock is the highest point and it's also the last to dry. But in our example, it's actually the other way around, sadly. But I don't think that's such a big detail. Um, you can see here that it's sort of drying from the top down almost. But I am very impressed with the way the water is drying in the back there. I just really stuffed up when I made this water look like silver. <laughs> but yeah, I think if we have proper water, um, a smaller radius for those drips, I think we can call this animation done. The steam's looking great. It might be a little bit of a low resolution, so maybe I will um, re-simulate that for uh, the final version. Um, rarely have I ever nailed an animation in the very first test. So this was my first test. Um, I simulated it in the evening and I rendered it overnight. Um, I will show you the render frames. So in a render, um, here we go. Um, and these were rendering out Um, I think approximately 25, 35, 45, 56. So they were quite slow renders. They were approximately 10 minutes of render. Um, now this is 1080p resolution. Um, I like to keep renders for well, animation frames at five minutes per frame for 1080p. That way you can render out approximately five seconds at least overnight. Um, while you're sleeping, you can have your computer running in the office or wherever. Um, but yeah, 10 minutes is a bit slow because I did only get through 81 frames yesterday. So we'll have to try and optimize the scene a little bit as well. I think the slowest part is just the fact that we have this steam. Um, there are ways about that, which I might do in another video. Um, but for now, we'll keep things simple, as I've been saying from the beginning. And there you have it, guys. Uh, our final steamy sauna render animation done with 3ds max phoenix fd and corona render i hope this has been somewhat useful for you i think using the wet map is incredibly powerful something that people don't seem to use too much 
and I hope you get something out of it. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you at the next tutorial from another Angle 3D Visuals.